Welcome back to Gruen. Good news! It looks like a brand is about to go viral. Check this out. This is Kmart in Mount Druitt. The lines went down the street, hundreds of people oh, wow. packing inside. There is still a, a degree of fear that this could be a potential super spreader event. Mm, well, better rush to Kmart to get all the things you'll need when you're stuck inside again. <laughs> but that wasn't the only Kmart line making news this year. Melbourne socialite Nadia Bartel and three other women have each been fined more than $5,400 after video was shared on social media showing them snorting a white powder. I am shocked. Not at the saga of Nadia Cartel, but that the media immediately identified this $3 Kmart plate. Shame they couldn't identify that suspicious white powder. Ironically, the whole Kmart saga made Nadia a target, but I think Kmart should embrace the scandal like this. You won't please me. <laughs> Other brands also had influencer issues. Toyota has spent years advertising its Hiluxes as unbreakable. Also unbreakable? The Taliban. Back cruising around Kabul on Toyotas. <laughs> oh, what a feeling. Specifically, this feeling. Bugger. Ooh, bugger. Mmm. <laughs> bugger. <laughs> then there was this unfortunate new ad. Together. We're telling the world, keep climbing. Good news, Delta did keep climbing. Which might be why the Delta Air CEO refuses to say Delta strain. Instead calling it, this is true, the B.1.617.2 <laughs> variant. Hmm, catchy. Soon Delta was even delivered here. How? The driver may have been infected with a Delta strain of the virus linked to the United States after picking up a FedEx cargo crew. Oh, my God, it's a brand's fault. <laughs> Should have really kept that tracking code. <laughs> Luckily, our own Delta variant had the best product placement of the year, front and centre at Kudos Bank Arena, which was a vaccination hub. <laughs> so, to kick off the season, we've FedExed a little something to the man who knows everything about going viral. Here you go, Russell. It's a $3 <laughs> Kmart place. And? You work in advertising, so I'm sure you'll be able to sort out the rest. <laughs> Joining Russell, Howcroft, Sunita Gloucester, Dee Madigan and Todd Sampson! <laughs> This year, nothing could stop the rapid worldwide spread of vaccine marketing. There was this, which put the sing in Singapore. The Virgin Islands struck a similar chord. COVID-19 is a real thing, so make we all do the right thing. Vaccinate, don't procrastinate, don't hesitate, cos it's not too late. I would have gone with hesitators, get the ventilators. <laughs> Finland had Eurovision star Mr Lordy, who was looking very healthy, <laughs> while Brazil had a vaccine mascot, Zagotchinha, uh, also known as Joseph Droplet, or from some angles, the COVID Klansman. <laughs> and where else but New Zealand could you find the only ad calling COVID-19 an egg? Hey, COVID! You are a bit of an egg in 2028. Do you know what this is? It's the metaphorical door to freedom. The Australian government allocated $91 million to vaccine marketing. Oh, I can't wait to see what they came up with. A COVID-19 vaccine is your best defence and our only way forward. Now's the time to arm yourself, your family, your friends, your workmates, your community, someone you love. Find out when you can arm yourself and book your vaccination. Go to australia.gov.au. Mm, that ad made me want to self-arm. <laughs> the, the only thing that would have made it interesting is if they revealed this. <laughs> Let's talk about the very militaristic-sounding slogan, arm yourself. Sunita, what do you make of arm yourself? 
Well, I think this is an extraordinary government campaign. Now, we know it's rational wallpaper. Government advertising usually is because, you know, they, their purpose is not to create offence, not to give the opposition a free kick on any level. But the fact that this even got out the door, I find extraordinary. Not because it's bland, but, but it doesn't pass a risk test for me. So Arm Yourself is, an, is open to ridicule from pro-gun factions. Mm -hmm. I think it's deeply insensitive to minority and refugee communities that might have lived experience with mm -hmm. that phrase. And I think for an anti-vaxxer, to give them a slogan like that where they just have to add one letter to turn it into harm yourself as the message, I think is pretty risky. Now, none of those things eventuated, which is great, but I think it might give you a nod to how risky the other campaigns might have been that they researched or how off the back foot the government was at the time, reacting to this unfolding delta very quickly, and they didn't have a deliberate strategy in place for July. But don't you think this was deliberately ineffective? It was a Clayton's campaign. Uh -huh. It's the campaign you do when you don't actually want to campaign. The last thing this government wanted at that time was people going out to get vaccinated because there wasn't enough <laughs> vaccines. Like, so it was designed to be exactly as effective as it was, which is not very effective. No, I think it was just awful and poorly done and poorly <laughs> thought through. I think the best part of the campaign is the line. I know it plays to anti-vaxxers, but I think it's the cleverest part of it. I think the worst part of it is it's meant to be a rally ad without emotion. And you can't rally people with no emotion. And I know, having pitched on a lot of government work over many, many years, it's a formula. Yeah. And agencies are doing it to make money and they make a substantially good margin from government business. And the formula is really simple. And if you look at that ad and you think about this formula, they hit it perfectly. Catchy line. Arm yourself, visual device, band-aids, diversity throughout, and they even used moving forward. I mean, it is classic, ineffectual, wasted money government advertising. Soon Delta overwhelmed Australian businesses. No, not that one. <laughs> so the federal government strolled out another big budget spot. Trigger warning, it's the scariest ad I've seen since the Canadian mascot, Uncle COVID. Mike, how are you doing? Mm, hello. Uh, let's take a look at our ad. That is not what I meant by we need an ad that takes your breath away. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> that ad <laughs> aired for two weeks and two days. Is that because it worked too well? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth saying up front that fear works. It definitely works. But it's more effective in getting us to stop doing something than it is to get us inspired to take action. But the two major issues I have with that is, first, is distribution. In a normal marketing, for COVID as well, if you were marketing a product, the first thing you would get sorted out is your supply and your distribution, and then you would advertise. Because if you advertise and you don't have that, it's a nightmare. And in this case, they advertised to the under 40s and didn't have their distribution sorted. So that, to me, was a massive, massive error. The second thing is targeting. So we originally positioned COVID as an old person's problem, and we hammered it for a long time. And then someone went, ooh, young people are at risk. Now we have to reposition COVID. But the strategy they chose was death. What we do know is young people believe in science. We didn't choose that as the avenue. We chose selling death to them, selling death to the invincible youth. No, the, 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 this, this advertising, actually, it did work. So there's evidence that it did work. And it absolutely was required at the time. New South Wales had been on Bondi Beach throughout 2021. And all of a sudden, the Delta strain was in the building and people had to be scared. And because there, was, there wasn't any fear of Delta. Now, in other parts of the world, there were, there were morgues put at the end of people's streets. And as a result, when, when vaccine became available, they queued up to get vaccine. In our, in our country, there was very little fear. And fear did have to be fabricated in order to kickstart 
the vaccine program, and we know that this ad kick-started the vaccine program. There's evidence that that is what happened. Yeah, but, but fear doesn't work to get you to go do, do that. Fear works to stop you from doing something. I okay. can't no, no, imagine no, no. this inspiring young people who can't get the vaccine anyway to go out and get vaccinated. I think you're right that fear doesn't work on some cohorts, like young males between, say, 18 and... 25. This woman's in her 30s. I agree with Russell that fear would have worked, but this ad doesn't work. The only thing scary about it is that first frame that says, you know, this has distressing content and, and you watch that. But the problem with the internet, it's such a hungry beast that within hours of this ad coming out, everyone knew it was an actress. So if this was to have worked, what they should have done was source footage from overseas of an actual yes. person and say, this is an actual person. Yeah. Uh, with the Federation also on life support, the states released their own ads, which were all about as similar as the cast in a Channel 9 vaccination campaign. <laughs> the states were all working from the same generic starter pack, including sport, concerts, long, boring drives, long, boring walks, <laughs> babies meeting oldies and ethnically ambiguous weddings. <laughs> but WA had its own distinctive flavour, this maudlin cover. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. France ran a similar campaign, but with one major difference. See if you can spot it. The difference was it was actually good. <laughs> the other difference, we got fleshy arm flab and the French showed a needle. Now, Russell, there's heaps of pricks on TV, so <laughs> why not show one in this ad? What I'm imagining happened is that somewhere along the line they received some research that said, oh, listen, don't show the needle. That's the thing that puts people off. It's complete nonsense. You have to show the action that's required. The other reason why the French ad's incredibly good, of course, is they had a long period of being locked down, like literally with everything shut down severely. Most people knew someone that had died. And so as a result, the idea of freedom's got a far more powerful... There's a far more powerful tone of voice in the ad. Of course, the notion of being French and being free, that's a big part of their DNA. It's very deep in who and what they are. So all of, all of that sort of cultural uh, DNA led to them creating a, a really beautiful piece of advertising. And then, of course, it went around the world. Every market in the world said, why can't we have one of those, please? Yeah. And Russell's right. There was actually a study done last year in Australia at Macquarie Uni that said 8% of people were vaccine hesitant because they were afraid of needles. I, I have a child like that, but I'm a cruel mother and making them vaccinated <laughs> anyway. But I would argue the French one almost overcomes that because you can actually see just how tiny it is and how quickly it's, exactly. it's done. And I think, I think we should have shown needles. Mm. I, think it, I think they made the wrong call there. Yeah, Pharrell, I mean, but though, seriously, that... just how precious are we? It's yeah. just... Yeah. You know, oh, I'm not having AstraZeneca. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's out. Yeah. It is seriously outrageous how precious we've been over the last 12 months. Oh, it you is, can't show... It is actually pretty funny. You're absolutely right. Because, like, we're, the, we're meant to be this country of, like, we're wrestling crocodiles and that's oh. not a knife. And they're like, I better don't want to get a needle. <laughs> but, Will, that ad, that, that ad is made by music. Pharrell is an incredibly astute business person. He mm -hmm. sold that song, Freedom, to multiple brands, to banks, mm -hmm. Walmart. They sold it all over. He makes tons of money from selling his music to advertising. That music is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with the government leaving an advertising vacuum, brands hoovered up the mess. Virgin showed a weirdly empty flight. Welcome back. But let's disembark here with Qantas. Is that you, Mum? It's a younger version of me. <laughs> Mum, can we go to Disneyland? I've been on my own or lemonade. Is it only me out here? Searching for the place to begin to <laughs> Is it me? Is it you? Is it me? Bloody explored. So, where are you headed? Singapore, for a wedding. Taking the kids to Disneyland Resort. London. Gonna see someone very special to me. Hey, guys. Oh, my God! <laughs> Just the place. Gorgeous. 
We'll be there soon. So I had to dream that I just fly away. Oh, I can't wait to go back to Wuhan. <laughs> um, I was there a couple of years ago, had some awesome food. Felt a bit crook when I got back, but anyway, long story, another time. That ad was a hit, which in advertising terms means people didn't hate it. But personally, I was worried about this part. I got just the place. <laughs> You know, it's still in the bag. <laughs> this part. London, I see someone very special to me. Mm, he's talking about the Queen. He just heard she's single. <laughs> and. <laughs> Too soon? No, no, no. And this part. Oh, great. Now you're a cluster. <laughs> Todd, you're on the board of Qantas, so we'll assume you love it. Dee, what did, <laughs> what did you think? I really liked it. It's very on-brand for Qantas. It's an Australian song. It's high production values. I like it. It's not just an ad. They gave a lot of giveaways to get vaccinated. What I liked most about it was it didn't have a voiceover from beginning to end telling you what to think and what to do. It allowed you to feel. And I think brands would do very well to remember that where we consume media has changed. And a lot of times it's on, say, Facebook, which has auto-captioning. You have a voiceover from beginning to end. You have text all along there. And what that does is it takes you from an emotional space down to a rational space. You're starting to read. We make all purchasing decisions emotionally. Choosing to get vaccinated is a purchasing decision. You have to keep people in an emotional space. And you know what we did is we overlooked the oversell, right? At that time in August, you couldn't get much vaccine still and you certainly couldn't book a flight because no one was talking about flying for at least another year. But that didn't matter to us because Qantas saw what our realities were, what we were feeling at the time, what the dream was, and they gave us a pathway there and they stepped into the vacuum where nobody else was talking to us emotionally. But I still remember buying a coffee and the two ladies in front of me a few places were crying talking about the ad. Like, it had such a reaction with them, like everyday people. That's when you know you've got a winner. Russell, is that the ad or is that the moment? Or can you not differentiate the two? Well, uh, yeah, it's definitely both. But Qantas has done a great job, um, I think, throughout the whole pandemic where they've kept the discussion alive and continuously, I think, giving us a sense of optimism that in the end we are going to get back on planes and start flying again. I, I reckon they've done fantastically well. I then think about um, Virgin. Again, they, they're on, on the air. Grouse, they're on the air. Let's remind ourselves that in February at the Australian Open, Jane Hurdler, who's now the new CEO of Virgin, she was booed because she said, let's hurry up and get vaccinated so we can fly again. So thankfully we've all moved on from that moment. Is Grouse a good thing? Grouse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long have you been here? I don't in this know. Country? I don't really talk you to people that say grouse. You haven't heard that things are not to me. grouse? No. Is grouse, grouse is a grouse really is good. Grouse is great. <laughs> okay, good. Grouse, grouse is real. I'm going to start using it. <laughs> you should use it. No, don't. Grouse. Yeah, on your yeah. next special, Todd Sampson makes your brain yes. grouse. <laughs> As we embark on our roadmap out of vaccine advertising, some are explicitly targeting the hesitant, like the Swiss government. And this very non-government approved clip from independent filmmaker Hugo Kohler. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the AstraZeneca just seems a little risky. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you just don't know what's in it. Shit's fucking poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, did I spot a Kmart plate? <laughs> <laughs> D, would this work for the last 10% holding off? No. Um, I think you can probably divide that 10% into two fives. Mm -hmm. um, with any campaign, you've got your, your low-hanging fruit, people who are easy to get. You've got your middle ones, you have to work a bit. There's some you'll never get, and they're the hardcore anti-vaxxers. Now, telling them they're dumb won't work. These people think they're so smart. They've found a YouTuber who knows more than all the scientists. Leave them alone, you're wasting your resources. Mm -hmm. The other 5% are people who don't like being told what to do. And I think they're gettable. So if you look at the freedom rallies, a lot of them are young males, and we do know that young males of all species go through a period where they don't like authority. Just in a, Australia, it seems like some of them are still there in their 40s and 50s. <laughs> you can get them. <laughs> you can get them. You just have to be a bit 
clever about it. And as um, we mentioned earlier, that, that fear of death won't do it. We knew no. from road accident ads that telling young guys they're going to die never worked, but telling them they, you know, had a small willy if they're speeding worked. So maybe for this lot, um, talk about the fact that long-term COVID effects include erectile dysfunction. <laughs> and you might get them that way, but you don't get them by telling them they're dumb. If you, if you don't get the jab, you can't give someone a jab. 100%, <laughs> yeah. This week, Bunnings announced it will become a vaccination hub where they'll beat COVID by 10%. But I enjoyed the ads Bunnings DIY'd ever so subtly to be played in different markets around the country. See if you can spot the difference. It's not uncommon for me to work seven days a week. They call me the 24-7 chippy. For me, knowing that whatever job I take on, there's a Bunnings just around the corner. I can <laughs> nip in and all the materials are all in the same miles. It's just brilliant. Uh -huh getting in there early and then using that power pass and just going straight out. That's just me to a T. Bunnings trade for me is, the, it's just so easy. It really is. Mm, I better know which one they're running in Byron. <laughs> <laughs> pitch we've enjoyed needling the government's vaccine messaging but it's time for a shot in the arm we challenged our agencies to win over the vaccine hesitant let's find out what they've got up their sleeves first up hi i'm richard from analog flow encouraging aussies to get the jab is one of the most defining challenges facing our nation today so easy brief then our approach was to remind people that in the face of conflicting information in the end your heart always knows who to trust Here's our pitch. Come on, the whole gang's going. You have to come along. Yeah, look, we've got heaps of work on. It'd be great to get you on the team. But you're my favourite teacher. You are coming back, aren't you? We want you here with us, love, at the table where you belong. Hey, do you want to go for a walk? When are you coming over, Dad? I've been practising my penalties. But if you're not vaxxed? If you're not vaxxed, just can't risk it. You're going to miss the final. I need to think of the customer. I was really counting on you. Never mind. Maybe next time. Spreading misinformation. You know, there's a lot of fear out there. The disinfectant. Conspiracy theories. They divide our community. Complete nonsense. You've convinced me, so next up. Hi, I'm Jeremy, and I'm from Paper Moose. Doing your own research is great, but there's something to be said for trusting our top scientists. We hope you enjoy. You're having a reaction. Um, you're going to be fine. Hold still. Wait, what brand happy pen is that? I don't know. What's in it? Medicine. <laughs> Medicine? How long is it research for? I don't know. What are the stats from Europe? You could die. What does Joe Rogan say? Culture. We don't question the science when our life depends on it. So why question it when millions of lives depend on it? Science has our backs. Get the vax. Well, you've certainly convinced me, but what will our panel think? Russell, which did you prefer? Uh, well, the first commercial analogue folk, I, I think that was actually really, really well made. However, the insight from Paper Moose around, in particular, the idea that the brand, the brand matters when there's a, when there's a bigger thing at play, really appealed to me enormously, so number two. Uh, Sunita, what about you? We're at that stage of lockdown where it's time to just laugh. So the second one gets my vote. OK, uh, what about you, Dave? Yeah, I like the strategy of the first one, but I found the execution a little bit complicated. It felt like two ads sort of mashed together and I think I would have tuned out, whereas the second one felt more cohesive and I think it addressed one of the barriers in a way that didn't get your back up. So I'm choosing number two. Uh, so, Todd, you've got the uh, deciding vote. No, it's already decided. <laughs> which did you uh, think was the most grouse of those Which was the most grouse? Yeah. Uh, I think there was one clear winner there, and it won. Uh, <laughs> I thought the, to take one of the big concerns that anti-vaxxers have and then to dramatise it in that way... By the way, I thought they could have gone serious or funny with it. Both would have been powerful. Uh, I thought the second one was much better. Well, congratulations to uh, Paper Moose. I am going to send you this trophy, which will be rolled out to you eventually. <laughs> this 
this week, two of the biggest bands in the world joined forces in the most unlikely collaboration since Russell and Todd. <laughs> so let's find out what happened when luxury fashion brand Balenciaga released a 10-minute ad with another very familiar brand. Frenchie, I've always loved the French. Dear Balung, Balloon, Balin, Balenciaga. That's right, The Simpsons. The ad then featured some very elaborate product placement. Send me the cheapest thing with your label on it, a scarf, a piece of cloth with a price tag, even just a tag. Just a tag? That's crazy. to return it. I just want to wear it once. What if you sweat in it? Trust me to be graceful. <laughs> Thanks for the dream. I'll always remember those 30 minutes of feeling just a little special. This is the saddest thing I've ever heard. And I grew up in the Soviet Union. So, Russell, simple question, WTF, what the Flanders? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun, isn't it? So, I, look, high, fa high fashion. High fashion is... It's expensive. Um, it's absurd. It loves high production values. I'm sure it loves having an inside joke um, with those with the cognoscenti. I also think um, maybe Marge, in a way, reflects the strategy in that Marge is someone who follows the brand. Um, so she has a relationship with the brand and she's inspired by the brand. And like many of us in the real world, you might just follow a fashion brand, be inspired by it, um, and one day want for it. Yeah. And they actually ran it on the runway instead of having models come out. Mm. They actually ran this instead, which was a pretty... No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I think this is complete creative indulgence, it's wasteful, and it is a absolute sign that they haven't got a clue about social and influences. Because I don't think an ad can be great if nobody sees it. If you've got two brands as big as Balenciaga and The Simpsons and only seven million people see it, you've failed, right? Especially if you worked on it for a whole year. Now, Balenciaga are just behind the game here. Most of the luxury houses have already partnered with K-pop bands and when they have 70 million subscribers and put one video out which cracks a billion views on YouTube, if that's where you're going to play as Balenciaga, do a better job. Because, you know, the, the Christian Dior, for example, um, released that they were going to do all the outfits for BTS, a Korean K-pop band. Oh, you don't need to tell me. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they're so... BTS, my favourite since BTM. <laughs> How about Blackpink? How about Blackpink? <laughs> their search went up 420% in three days. So I think, you know, this is us talking... In, we're in the echo chamber again. This is Adland, PR people, patting ourselves on the back about something that nobody saw. I don't know exactly what its total cumulative numbers are, but I think as far seven as... Seven million. Is it really only seven yeah. million? Fuck, that's terrible. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I, but, it's a fail. Uh, but I think, but I, I think fashion in itself is so silly, and it is like advertising's child. And I think for them to partner with a kind of populist, mainstream, <laughs> global, uh, some would say fading brand was an interesting choice. And uh, what I think I like more about it is the notion that they're trying to ditch this sort of pretense of fashion, but keep the price. See, I, I, yeah. I don't think the seven million is a problem because this isn't a mass market product. And I think what they're doing is we're in this sort of trouble time and they're trying to appeal to this nostalgic sense of safety when we yeah. crave it. And this is, you think The Simpsons came out in 1989, so, you know, we're all probably in our 40s or <laughs> some of us more. And when you're <laughs> sitting at home and you're watching the news and it's all COVID and you're three wines in and you see, you know, an outfit or something that comes out and, it and it's The Simpsons, you hear, I'm 
buy that. And then three days later, the pass arrives and you're like, I can't wait to see what drunk me bought sober me. I mean, it may, it may, not, be, <laughs> it may not be more than this creative director mm. that, uh, for this brand. This, this creative director loved The Simpsons. He loved it his whole life. He watched it when he lived in the Soviet Union. Uh, so he, he may, it may not be more than that. But maybe if we want to look at what their marketing strategy is, we have to look at his approach, yeah. the creative director's approach, because the creative director for that company leads all of this. And he has been someone who's been a meme baiter for a long time. I mean, he basically... So he's a what? He's a, he, he uses memes. He basically baits people online. Like he created high, at one stage, he created uh, stiletto Crocs. Crocs. And then he took yeah. the, you know, the bag at, Ike at Ikea, the big blue bag yeah. that we carry around that's kind of that rough material? He made it leather and he put their brand on it and sold it for $1,200. Yeah. yeah. So they, 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 he's been meme he baiting follows, for a long time. He, so he's he, taken the biggest meme, yeah. arguably, in the world, which is The Simpsons, yeah. uh, and he's used that as their strategy. And he's moving this fashion brand that sits out here. It's, their average prices are $800, you know, for their shoes, for their runners. And he's taken it and he's moving it a bit more street, and he's chosen The Simpsons to do it. I do agree it's questionable whether Simpsons as an aging brand is the right brand yeah. to do that. No, he wears I, I don't think I don't think I don't question the brand at all because he does go for mass appeal brands. So mm. Fortnite, Crocs, Simpsons makes sense to me. Just the execution of this gave him a one-hit wonder overnight with some PR and that was it. Whether you could have got a whole lot more out of it, like some of the other brands are doing, which is longevity and more viewers. Because ultimately, an ad can't be great if people don't see it and it causes an impact. I still am just thinking about meme baiting. I'd never heard yeah, that term right. before. <laughs> and then Todd said it so many times. I'm just like, is that a thing that everybody's saying? <laughs> like a minute ago, he didn't know what grouse was. And now he's like, meme baiter, meme baiter. <laughs> You've said meme baiter so much, yeah. I've gone blind. Baiting, baiting, <laughs> baiting. Yes, that's it. Well, I'm going to use grouse now. <laughs> Later in that ad, the Simpsons characters travelled to Paris and took to the runway. Cheap, Clancy Wigger. Helen Smithers. Holy crap. I'm beautiful. More Sislak. Bartholomew Simpson. You think that offends us? This is France! <laughs> <laughs> Dave, why sell high fashion with a family that wears the same clothes every day? Because that's kind of exactly why you pay attention to the clothes. And ultimately, this is about selling the clothes. But apparently, it was really tricky for the animators to make the clothes look good on cartoon characters that don't have normal human dimensions, although you could argue neither do models. Um, <laughs> they've basically made Marg, who's, you know, got a foot-long, you know, blue beehive, look really sexy. That dress looks great, and all the clothes in that are from this season's mm -hmm. collection. Balenciaga is a luxury brand where the highest prices are just the beginning, like this very real fake tradie costume, which costs $5,200. Ah, what a meme baiter. <laughs> I'm not spending that on... I'm serious, I'm going to buy 1,733 Kmart plates. <laughs> of course, The Simpsons are no strangers to a brand partnership. They've sold... <gasps> Tic Tacs, Adidas, Nike, Mambo, Burger King, KFC, Toyota, Subaru, Renault and Lego. In fact, they've sold so many brands, it's actually easier for us to do just a quick Simpsons-style scroll of them all. Please thank our panel, Russell, Tanita, Dee and Todd, as the many Christmas products already for sale in Woolies suggest the world spins fast. In the years our show has been on air, we've seen plastic bags replaced with thicker, uglier plastic bags. Fresh food people replaced with self-service checkouts. And at my self-service checkout, avocados replaced with onions. So we'll leave you tonight with a taste of how things were in simpler times. We'll see you next week. Well, this is it, the culmination of weeks of preparation by the girls and $10,000 expenditure by their chain store. The National Checker of the Year Championships. The girl who can shovel through 30 groceries in 40 seconds with the correct total is well on the way to winning. There are numerous heats, 
and the deciding factors are a written test, personality, appearance, deportment and speech. 